Welcome back VR fans to another video. In this one we're going to continue our Shader Graph series and today we're going to be looking at fire. Okie dokie, right. So here's what we're going to be making today. Got a nice flame here, which you can do a lot with. It's all really customizable. We can tweak things to make it look different, apply some different effects to it. And all these shaders that we make in this series are all on my Patreon page if you want to go and grab them from there. So you don't actually need the 3D model for this. All you really need is um, a a plane or a quad in the scene. You can see here, just a quad, just sitting on the surface of a plane like that. Uh, and you can use anything for your model that you want to. Let's turn this one off for a sec. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a new empty object. We're just going to make a quad in the scene. I'm going to rotate it round like that. Place it in my torch or wherever you've got a fire. I'm going to use the rect tool to Manipulate it into position a little bit. There we go. Cool. So we've got something to put our flame onto. Then we'll go down to wherever you want to make your shader. If you go to right click, go create, and we're going to go to shader graph, URP, lit shader graph. And we'll call this fire starter. And then we'll go ahead and create a material, call this one torch fire. Drag and drop it onto our plane that we just made, and change the Torch, change the shader type, shader graph, and we're going to go to fire starter. At the moment, there's nothing there, and that's okay. We're going to go and add to it now. So, go back to our shaders, double click fire starter, and bring it up in the shader graph window. Okay, let's get stuck into it. We've got our fire starter shader graph window open here, and the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to set up our shader. So, we're going to go to the graph settings, and the surface type is transparent, and we are good to go. So the first thing we're going to need is a shape for our flame. So we're going to go and create a parameter here and we're going to use a texture 2D and let's call this flame shape. I've got one here which I've made fire, fire 1 and fire 2 basically for different kind of shapes and styles of fire. I'll show you these. So at the minute I'm going to use fire 2 and because it's more of like a candle -y shape. Let me show you those textures in the inspector. So here are my flame textures. Basically, I've painted them as the style I want them to look like when we apply them back to the plane. And all these will be distorted, but these just give the fire its rough shape. So I've got like a campy fire one here, one that looks more like a candle, and then one where I just went crazy. And these are just painted in Photoshop with uh, just, a, just like a white soft brush and painted. And then where there's white areas, these will be brighter in the texture. So it's going to be white, brighter at the base and then slowly kind of fades away. Just really quickly painted. Um, if you don't have, I'll put Make Fire, the one we're going to use for this tutorial available for download. It's the links in the description. If you want the other two, um, I'll make those, obviously they'll be on my Patreon page. But if you don't want either of those, what you can do is on the flame shape, you could use the default particle texture, which um, I think comes with every version of Unity. You could just use that for this tutorial if you really wanted to. I'll leave mine on Fire 2 for a minute. And then next, we're going to put this in to our editor. So we're going to press the space bar, start ty typing sample texture 2D, drop that texture into the texture slot of our sample texture 2D. So now we've got this here. This is the shape our flame's going to take. But we're actually going to distort this in a, uh, a couple of ways. We're going to distort the UV so it looks like this is all flickering and moving around like a flame. So whenever we're distorting something, and usually it's over time when we're moving it, we're actually going to need a, a time node. So we'll go ahead and press spacebar and we'll start typing time. And we want to have some control over how fast our flame is moving. So we'll go ahead and create a float. We'll call this fire speed. And let's go ahead and for a minute, let's give this a default value of something like 0.25. And we'll drag it into our editor window. We need to combine these two together. So we're going to multiply these. Press spacebar and type multiply, and we're going to drag our fire speed into A and our time into B. So now we've got some controls for time. We're going to distort this texture in a second so it looks like it's moving up. So in order to do create that effect, we're going to need to offset those UVs. So we're going to press spacebar and we're going to use the tiling and offset node. Now they're going to be we're going to offset it over time. So we can plug in our time controls here. We're going to put that in our offset. So now it's going to be scrolling over time. 
Then we're going to need to make it look like this texture is being distorted. So what we're going to do is we're going to overlay some kind of noise over here. But it looks like it's got that kind of distorted effect moving up it. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a gradient noise like this. And we're going to plug our tiling and offset into our UV2. And you can see there we've already got some movement going on. We've got our movement. But as you can see, it's going in the X and Y direction. So we're going to need to work on changing that. At the moment, we've got this fire speed here, which is just a float. We're going to remove that a second, and we're going to create a vector 2, and we're going to put that in our multiply slot. So now we're going to have a bit more control over direction. So in our Y, we could put 1, and that's going to start moving it quite fast down. But if we put, make it go the other way to make it look like it's going up, change it to a minus, put 0.25. There we go. It looks like we're moving up now. And if you wanted to, you could always put a little bit in the X. But for a minute, I'm going to change that to zero. So that's how you can control the direction. And to convert that to a parameter, I'm going to go to convert to, right click, convert to property. I can go ahead and actually remove my fire speed. I've got a better way to do that now. I'm going to rename this vector to name direction. Okay, next up, we need to do a little bit of combining. We need to basically take our gradient noise and our UVs and kind of merge them together to get that distortion. And to blend two things together like that, I'm going to use the lerp, and I'm going to plug in my gradient noise to my B, and I'm going to the UVs of my object. So I'm going to type in UV, geometry UV, there we go. I'm going to put that in my A socket. I need to control how much of a blend we're doing between these two. So I'm going to make a new node. It's going to be a float node. I call this distortion amount enter and for a minute it's going to give it a default value of 0 0.1 i'm going to drag and drop that window and connect up to the d node now you can see we've got some cool blending going on between our noise and the uvs it acts as it's, uh, it's going to distort uvs of the texture of our texture i'm going to drag and drop this into our uv slot here and you can see it creates the distortion across our texture we can go ahead plug this in to our base color, our preview window bigger, make it a quad. There we go. You can also drop that into our alpha slot as well, and you start to see the makings of our awesome fire. Let's just save it here, jump back into Unity quick, go back to our plane, our fire quad, and let's drop in our flame material into our texture slot. And as you can see, we have the makings of our flame. Now we'll look at adding a little bit of color to this. So we'll go up to our properties, go to add, and we'll add a color. We'll call this flame color. I'll add that to the top. Let's go ahead, make it HDR, and we'll give it a color of like a fiery color, orange. Drag and drop that into our editor. We want to take our texture here and our flame color, combine them together, and put that in our base color. So add the color to our texture we're going to use a multiply node and we're going to drop in our flame color to the top texture to the bottom boom and add that into the base color under the color we can crank up the intensity a bit here we go starting to look very flamey now then in the editor i just made that a little bit brighter Bit more orangey crank the intensity and we've got something looking really cool if you wanted to make that emissive as well you could drag and drop that into your emissive slot save it and that's also going to produce make it look more emissive in your scene you and go ahead and add like a emissive power to here so control that value if you wanted to so that's it in its simplest form. You can go ahead another level on top of here. We can go ahead and add another layer of distortion to our shader, which gives you even more flexibility and control. But we can kind of also think about giving it a little bit more control of like the fading of it. It looks a bit more like flicky. And to do that, we can continue. We're going to work on our distortion. So it's all going to be before the texture. So we can use the time node we've already got. The first thing we're going to do is create a property and it's going to be a vector 2 all this fade control so i can drop that into our window you can use this time node we've already got take our multiply node 
put in our fade control and we're dragging our time node to the bottom. Because we're offsetting those UVs again, we're going to use tiling and offset. And we're dragging our multiply node into the offset. Under our fade control, we're going to get a little bit of movement on the x axis, so 0.1, and on the y, minus 0.5. Instead of using a gradient noise, we're going to use a different kind of noise. We're going to go for Veronoi noise. Verono? Veronoi. We use that noise, and we're going to plug in. I'm tiling an offset to our UVs because we're going to want to make a move. We're going to need to look at the power of this so that the black becomes a lot blacker and not so much of a little dot with a fade. So to do that, we're going to click our out slot, drag out, and we're going to create a power node. And then when you play around with this, uh, the X scale here, you can see we can start to use it, create a more cellular kind of look. And then we're going to want to combine our texture with this fade out. So we're going to use a multiply node. I'm going to take our texture and we're going to multiply it with our fade control. Now at the moment it's actually fading out our, a lot of our texture. So we're going to want to look at our cell density. Too many cells at the minute so if we bring that right down and maybe look at incre decreasing the power ever so slightly. There we go. This is playing with these values to find something we're happy with. And then you take that multiply node and assign it to where we're doing our color start to get some interesting effects. But we're going to need to have a look at some of these properties in the inspector. We want to be able to control the power of that noise that we've just added in for the fade. We'll call that fade power, create a float. And we'll drag that in just before our power node and assign it in the little slot. And then we'll give it a, a default value of say two for a minute. And we could also have a look at the scale of that fade. So we create another property of a float We'll call it fade scale and drag and drop out look into our cell density of the Veroni noise value put free in there for a minute and then go ahead and click save asset and back in unity you can now see that we've got a little bit more control over how our fire looks start to bring up the like the fade scale fade power start to get a really kind of cool looking fire effect work on the speed of how that's moving might want that a little bit faster, say minus one. There we go, we've got a really interesting, cool looking fade effect. And we've got even more properties we can play with that make our fire look more realistic. So by having that second layer of distortion in there, going straight and combining it with our texture, we can control how it give it an extra layer of distortion. But if we don't hook it into our alpha slot, you see we've gone straight from our flame into our alpha slot. Got that black, almost looks like smoke. Don't want that. Then you can just feed the result of combining the two into your alpha slot. And that's going to remove that blackness that's coming from the Veroni noise. Again, giving you different kinds of effects. I actually quite like it with that smoke, so I can often leave that connected. <laughs> but you can then play around with the values a bit more. You're going to get some really cool results much more customizable look to your flame. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found it really useful. If you do so, then please consider a subscription. It really helps me out. And don't forget, you can grab all these shaders from my Patreon page. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.